let's move on with fraction so right now I would like you to take a look at the test book for this page and also next page talking about something called the dynamic fraction and static fraction so after you finish it continue the video okay so first of all uh, we have to understand that frictional force is an opposing force so that means uh, it always go against your motion and here we're talking about for example a box moving to the right then the frictional force will be going to the left or in a, another case where you have uh, say the box when it is lying on to an incline plane usually it will be dragged downward right like by simply by common sense so under this tendency then the, then the friction would try to uh, stop it from going and therefore it will be pointing along the slope upward and by the way one thing that I would like to mention is um, one mi misconception that people usually have is for example there's a car uh, it is also mentioned in IGCSE as well um, say the car is moving forward and usually what the exam question we say is oh they have a certain friction that kind of drag the car backward and this is simply wrong in physics if you think about it uh, what actually keep the car moving forward is actually the friction from the tie and in fact the friction is actually pointing forward so that I mean in that case that is how the car motion can be going forward as well and so how is this related to the idea and still obeying the idea of opposing force then if you think about zooming in into the tie and if you try to look at the movement of the tie or you can try to observe how this car tie will move is actually you go in this direction right going in in a clockwise direction of course same for both wheels actually four wheels and then if you try to look at the relative motion to the ground because this is the bottom part where it will get touched with the ground or actually it should be the same level and in that case then the relative motion of the tie is actually moving backward in this direction so to the left of my screen and this is how you can get a frictional force which is going to the right and therefore propel your car forward so drawing a friction that is going this direction is simply nonsense because in that case then what is actually the force that propel your car forward then in the next page there are two main things that you need to look at so the first thing is dynamic friction or you may call it uh, kinetic friction the second thing is called the static friction to understand this quickly and easily I would suggest you to read the graph here which basically tell you when you have no motion that means before you actually move then it will be all static friction and once you start it to move to accelerate whatever then it will be the dynamic friction so you can see the uh, notation here the other thing that you should see is that uh, interestingly for all kinds of material in the world and all kind of motion that you have uh, whenever you start to started to move then the dynamic friction is always a little bit smaller than the maximum of static friction so uh, this is something that I will illustrate in the simulation later on uh, but then you can of course uh, firstly see the relationship in terms of the formula so you can see in general we will have friction equals to mu r notice that f is referring to of course the friction itself uh, depending on you're talking about dynamic or uh, static then you can substitute into it and the second symbol you can see this is mu which is called the coefficient of dynamic friction and this one depends on the material of what you have for example if you're having a uh, metal which is well polished or glass which is well polished then the coefficient of dynamic friction would be relatively smaller comparing to things like uh, the shoe or the mat uh, which you can see uh, that high coefficient of friction is actually due to the irregular surface 
of the material so that's why you can see for uh, shoes usually sports shoe that will require a better grip and also better uh, friction that can provide to you so that you can run faster uh, then you can see usually they are, are more irregular than maybe shoes like this all right same for uh, ties where some of the ties will have a more uh, sophisticated pattern for different terrain and different properties uh, for example when you try to go for um, driving in snow then you can see some people may even put on some chain to increase the surface area etc and then it can help you to provide better friction the last part of the equation is uh, here R, which referring to the normal force which we mentioned in the previous video or the uh, reaction force if you like if you like to call it this way so um, later on in the simulation I will hope you can see two things first thing is uh, you can see the dynamic friction is really smaller than the static one the second thing that I would like you to see is the relationship between the normal force and the friction because normally the coefficient of friction would not be changing throughout the motion okay so for the simulation I will put the link in the description I would like you to go to the third tab for this one you don't have to install anything and once you click into it you should be able to see this so you may uh, switch on everything uh, so that you can see a better picture of what is happening so right now I would like to give you some time uh, to find out so how is the friction related to the normal force and also try to see how to test and observe the dynamic friction, dynamic friction and the static friction's relationship. Do it! Just do it! Okay, so let me show you the um, difference between dynamic and static friction first. So I would uh, just randomly maybe pull one of these up. Uh, it actually doesn't really matter. So what you can see is that uh, once I started to push it using the drag here, uh, try to pay attention to the frictional force okay I hope you can see just now uh, it was 200 I think 20 something and now once I started to move uh, the frictional force suddenly changed much lower into 169 so I'll try to uh, show you again uh, in maybe a slower like increment a smaller increment so I think it was like 200 yeah so 200 still doesn't really push because now it is still the static friction so you can see um, dynamic friction of course we know uh, right now is 169 so even now it's greater than 169 is still not pushed yet because it is still in a static uh, motion static uh, friction range so until I think it will be 200 to I don't know okay 225 was the limit oh my god wow so whatever uh, the coefficient of this is uh, multiplied with the normal reaction that goes with 225 in that case so um, once it started to move it will jump to like suddenly change to the dynamic friction like here so you can see um, from this simulation it sh basically showed the interaction between these two okay so let's do a little bit of calculation here uh, based on the equation that F equals to mu n or mu r if you like to so uh, since we earlier find out uh, with such a mass notice that uh, in total m equals to 90 kg and therefore if you think about the weight it will be 900 if you use um, g for 10 and uh, therefore the normal reaction would be the same as the weight which would be 900 as well so according to this uh, then we just now had the static friction to be uh, 225 I remember right and then static friction uh, coefficient and then the m was 900 and so we can actually calculate how much it is and by calculator you should be able to find uh, 0 0.25 notice that there's no units because um, the friction and normal force is already in Newton so you don't have to put any unit for the coefficient at the same time you may find the dynamic friction using the same way so I can say FD equals to mu dn and uh, now the dynamic force I mean dynamic friction is 169 and I can find using the same approach and so using 
the calculator, you can find the answer that is 0 0.187 recurrent. So maybe I'll just take a bit more. Okay, so um, the purpose of doing all these things is I hope I can try to illustrate one more thing. What if we add one more thing? So let's say we add uh, this guy on top of it and then we'll try and hopefully we can use the idea of the coefficient to predict what kind of dynamic friction and static friction it would be. Okay, so if you like to do it yourself, you may want to pause the video and I'll do it now. So uh, once you add this guy onto it, then you will have 80 more kg with the whole system and therefore you would have um, 800 more Newton. So that would be in a total of 1,700 Newton. So if I try to do the maths uh, on the right hand side, then I could have the static friction equals to 0 0.25 times 1,700. And using your calculator, you can find it will be 400, 250, okay, Newton. So hopefully this is something we find for the static friction later on in the simulation, if the simulation is of course uh, designed well following the physics law. And for dynamic friction, we should be able to find as well, which is um, using the answer we find here. So 0 0.1877, hopefully the roundup won't affect too much, uh, times 1,700. So the answer would then be 0 point, okay, would be 319.09, so round it up to about 320. Newton okay so a moment of truth let's hope to find 425 and 320 okay so let me reset everything and then switch on all the numbers uh, be careful that you should not change anything with the friction so if I if I change this that basically it means I change the coefficient so I will okay, I have to do it again okay so uh, let's try so just now the number was uh, 425 Three two zero. Okay, so four hundred. Okay, three two five. I hope I can get it right. Three two five. Okay. Fake. That's the wrong number. <laughs> so between two five and two six, I think this is good enough, right? And then uh, the dynamic friction is three one nine. So maybe some runoff issue that uh is by one off. Okay, so I I, I get I'm actually quite happy with my result here. Okay, so uh, this is a very good practice and I, I actually quite enjoy it. Right now, what I would like you to do, if you would like to challenge yourself, try to see how you can find out the mass of this box. Okay, and once you find it, you can type your answer in the comment section below. Okay, so for the static friction, one thing that I would like to remind you in this video is uh, you can see the equation is written as mu s l and in fact you can see um, the static friction it has a range so mu s l is actually the maximum value of the static friction so for a better representation to talk about the static friction range I would actually like to use this symbol to show that uh, it is smaller or equal to mu s r. And really the last piece of advice is just now we tried the simulation I hope you enjoyed that uh, but ultimately physics is about the actual physical world other than simulation so I would encourage you to do a very simple test uh, find a few books and try to push it so uh, when you try to push say one book on your table or on the ground uh, and comparing to pushing maybe five books at once and of course you should be able to find the difference in terms of the friction and you should be able to find of course this one should have a greater friction because of the normal reaction is greater according to our equation that is F equals to mu n when this increase then friction will also increase